Hi there, my name is Roy Dunn and I'm going to walk through the various timing modes that are available with the stop shot and how they differ and some of the applications that we, we might use them for. As we power up the system, it goes through the splash screen and then we're presented with the main screen here and the default timing mode is independent. But we can change those timing modes very, very simply by hitting the config button. Timing, of course, is a global configuration aspect of the stop shot. And we see that the first line that the arrow is pointing to, as I mentioned before, it comes up in independent mode as default when we power up the stop shot. If we actually cycle through them, you can see there's actually four, there's four modes available to us. So there's independent, sequential mode, shutter lag mode, and time-lapse mode. Independent mode is typically used for our simpler setups, and, and I'll describe those in detail in a little minute. Sequential mode is for more complicated setups, such as when we're using the water drop kit, doing collisions and things like that. The third mode in, is the shutter, is the stop shot enables you to measure the shutter lag of your own camera. So you might read in the documentation that the shutter lag for your camera has a range between 40 milliseconds and 75 milliseconds. Stop shot will actually enable you to measure that very, very accurately. The last timing mode is time lapse. That should be self explanatory, but stop shot has its own inherent intervalometer enabling you to do time lapse photography very, very simply. Let's come back to independent mode. And this is where all of the output triggers can be programmed completely independent of each other, independently of each other. They're all dependent upon the event that's occurring on the sensor. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go back to the main screen. If I turn trigger one on, then trigger two on, and then trigger three on, and I tap this vibration sensor here, this is actually a, uh, an optional sensor produced by Cognosys that is available for purchase. It's, it's great for things like birds landing on perches, squirrel, squirrels jumping onto substrates and things, because what happens when I tap, all of these outputs are enabled. These, this is a very, very sensitive vibration sensor. And we can see here that trigger one, trigger two, and trigger three are enabled. You see the 50 microsecond value, that is essentially instantaneous. As soon as I click that vibration sensor, all of those output triggers are enabled at once. But what happens if I want to change the value of perhaps trigger two, I want to delay it by a certain number. Let's up the value of that will increment from perhaps 50 microseconds to a 10th or a 20th of a second maybe 120 milliseconds. Watch what happens now when I tap. The trigger one and trigger three, instantaneous, but trigger two had a delay. You might want to watch that again. As I tap this, the outer two come on and then the middle one, a third of a tenth of a second later. What happens if I change trigger three's delay value? So we go to it, select it, and I'm going to increment that to be the same value as trigger two, which is going to be 120 milliseconds about a tenth of a second, and I'll just increment that back down. So now they're both 120 milliseconds. What do we think might happen? My guess is that trigger one will occur instantaneously, and then a tenth of a second later, both of these lights will come on at the same time. Let's see if I'm right. Hopefully you saw that. The first trigger and then the second pair of triggers occurred at the same time after a delay. These are independent of each other. We, we can put in different numbers. In fact, let's do it just for laughs. We'll go to trigger three and I'll increment that to a higher number. And what we'll see is that the triggers come on sequentially one after the other because of this increasing delay. 50, second, 50 microsecond delay, 120 millisecond delay, then a quarter of a second delay. So this one will occur, this one will occur, and then this one will occur, just as we expected. Okay, let's now move into sequential mode and see how that changes. To get into sequential mode, I click the config button for a couple of seconds, we get into the global configuration menu, and I'm now going to increment the timing mode from independent to sequential. Okay, we're good to go. We come back here and we see that now that we're in a totally different global configuration, 
the triggers are set to their default value of off. So I'm going to increment these, turn them all on. Now you'll see that all of these triggers are enabled. The top line is labeled trigger, the second and third lines are labeled delay. And if you remember back to what I said in sequential mode, the event of trigger one has to occur completely before trigger two and trigger three are enabled subsequently. And the way the default setup is, is that trigger one will produce a, a pulse in 50 microseconds, essentially immediately, but the duration of that trigger pulse is approximately half a second. It's about 500 milliseconds. So we will see trigger one occur It'll be on for 500 milliseconds, then immediately trigger two will occur, then trigger three, 500 milliseconds after that. Let's watch. This one on, then this one. So the triggers are occurring half a second apart. And that is because the duration of trigger one is half a second. As soon as it's completed, trigger two occurs for half a second, then trigger three. Let's make that a little more obvious by changing some of these delays. We'll go and select the delay here and we'll delay this trig this second output, delay number two. Let's make it for a second, a whole second. This will require us to increment the value here for a little time. Okay, so I've adjusted the value to a second. I'm going to adjust the value of the third trigger to two seconds. Okay, I've completed the adjustment. So now that we have the sequence of operation, trigger one will occur the, the instant I touch the vibration sensor. Trigger two will occur for a half a second afterwards at the completion of that trigger one pulse. And then we'll see what actually happens to trigger two and trigger three. So I hit this, trigger one, half a second, but then there's a delay of a further one second and then a further two seconds before trigger three. I hope that's clear. So we get a half second pulse from trigger one immediately. Then we get a one second delay. So basically trigger two will come on one and a half seconds after trigger one. Trigger two will produce its half second pulse. And then after that, two seconds after that, delay number three. Let's see again. So you can see the incremental delay between the two is one and a half seconds here, two and a half seconds here. What this is essentially showing us is that neither of these triggers is activated or are activated until trigger one is complete. When trigger one is complete, then trigger two is enabled, it goes through its full process and completes, and then trigger three's delay value is added to at the point of completion of trigger two. As I mentioned, when we went into sequential mode, the default menu or the, the standard menu that comes up, the configuration is such that the first output is in trigger mode, the second two are in delay mode, which means they occur after the completion of the previous trigger output, the complete event of the previous trigger output. Let's see what happens when I take the second and third trigger outputs and configure them back into trigger mode as we would have had in independent mode as the default. So let me select this, go into config for the channel number two and take it back to trigger mode and then select to go to number three config go down to take it back to trigger mode config again and so now we have all three output channels are in trigger mode simply what this means is these are now outputs that are that are dependent upon sequential trigger events in other words and don't forget Channel one must occur before channel two, before channel three. So what's going to happen? I'm going to touch the uh, vibration sensor and watch the LEDs. Just channel one has been triggered. And as you remember, channel one has a 50 microsecond, essentially an instantaneous delay. Channel number two is waiting. Nothing, it, it's waiting for a trigger event now. Trigger one has completed but it's also looking for a trigger event. So if I tap the vibration sensor, 
We have a delay on this of one second. Watch what happens to LED number two. Wait a second, and then it comes on. Now, channel three is activated. We've completed the process for, for channel one, channel two. So now any event that occurs is going to be driving channel three. That has a delay of two seconds. I hit the vibration sensor, and two seconds later, channel three comes on. Now we've completed the entire sequence. If I hit it again, channel one. If I hit it again, channel two, after a one second delay. And then channel three after a two second delay. You'll notice on the screen as I'm going through this process, each channel as it's operating produces an asterisk instead of the colon. That's just to show us the state that the system is in. So Trigger one has gone through its process and has completed. Now trigger two is waiting. Touch the vibration sensor. You'll see the colon has changed to an asterisk. Now we're ready for channel three. And this is a feature that's really useful when we are setting up the system for fairly complex um, timing and configurations. By looking at the status of the screen, you can tell which triggers and which outputs are in which state, and, and it's a really helpful guide to go through the process. So I hope that clears up um, the operation of sequential and independent mode for you, and thanks for watching.